This week's special edition of Queen of TV Bowling brought to you by Partridge Meats, serving Cincinnati for over a hundred years. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm George Vogel, along with Dave Newrath and Jennifer Kleekamp. Once again, we're back at Northwest Lanes, and Jen, once again, the women. We watched Pam Shinshang just full phenomenal last week. Well, today she's got three bud saws right ahead of her. She's going to have a tough competition. With the line on match number one, the bowling guru, Dave Newrath. Thank you. Thank you very much. In match one, Pam will have her work cut out for her. Nancy Fair is probably one of the premier bowlers that this town has ever seen. And uh, we've just got some great scores for the next hour. Let's I, do it. I promise I won't call you guru again. Thank you. Okay. Stick around. It's all coming up on the Queen of TV Bowling. We're ready to go with match number one here in our second week. Final week of the Queen of TV Bowling show. Pam Shinshang has moved on. In match number one to meet this lady, Nancy Fair. Not the start we're used to seeing Nancy have. Pretty quick off the blocks. I, mean, I was a little surprised that she was poised and ready and then pounced. <laughs> we uh, started the cameras rolling here, leaving the four, six, seven as you see it there. Nancy will take the two on the left-hand side of your screen, the four, seven. And that she does. Not the start she wanted, but she got the first one out of the way now. And I'm sure she's ready to go to work in frame two. But first, we have to take care of Pam Shinshang. Boy, what a show she put on for us last week. She certainly did. Won two matches to get to this week. Yes, she crosses over, but a line drive in the box score. That's the way she did it, for sure. Uh, her two matches on TV last week, she totaled 454. And that ain't hay. Works out to about, uh, let me see here, uh, 227 average. Wow. Huh? Not all bad. <laughs> Without a calculator. <laughs> yeah, how about that? <laughs> I do some ciphering from time to time. <laughs> Fifteen yeah. strikes for that 227 average, and you're seeing right here how she got uh, there. And the four pin a little bit tight, but still not a bad shot. Right, I don't recall her. She crossed over in the first on the first ball, and I don't recall her crossing over once last week. Yeah, she was right in that pocket every single shot. Made her spares great. And that's why she's here. There she goes after that four pin. Converts the spare. Last week I had a few people ask me about the equipment that the women are using. And it's urethane, urethane, and urethane. It's all on the rack. And it is what makes the scores go higher. The women uh, especially are benefiting from the extra roll and the extra hit and the extra pin action that you see there. Nancy going a little wide, but getting the pin action with the head pin. Let's see if we can pick it up on the replay here. His head pin center of your screen obviously is going to go to the left-hand side. Watch it right here. Go to the wall. Come off the wall. A little whirly bird takes that five cleanly out of there, but the seven still remains. Nancy only bowls once a week and averages 212. That tells you how good she is right Boy. there. Disgusting. <laughs> that is disgusting. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I tell you, Nancy has, has been one of the premier bowlers for years and years. Uh, we'd like to take just a minute to send out condolences to the whole Lally family. Uh, Nancy's father, Art, passed away a couple of weeks ago, and this entire city sends out its love and respect to a man that has given the, the game of bowling the, 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 the enthusiasm and the integrity that it justly deserves. Art, we miss you, but I know you're rolling a few <laughs> up there. The next storm we hear is going to be Art. And of course, he was a member of the power-packed Hudipool beer team in which the captain was Peck Abercamp back in the 50s and 60s. 
contributed a lot to this game. Look out, look out, look out. Hmm. Nancy going across lane. Uh, again, typically a very good spare shooter. Let's see if we can pick up what she is doing improperly going across. Well, she, she threw the ball well, just not allowing for the extra oil on the outside, just missing the spare by less than a quarter of an inch. Looking up at the score, she knows that Pam, after watching last week's show, knows that she is no slouch. There's the ball she rolled several times last week, time and time again. Time and time again. Let's watch it one more time. It's tenth board. Yeah, she's not changing a thing. One three pocket, no deflection, six pin doing a number on the ten. Just making a mimeograph copy. Of course, it's not mimeoed out anymore. It's uh, no. laser imprinting and everything else. You got that right. Good looking player. She brings back the double here in the fourth frame and has opened up a little bit of room. The trip 4-7. What pin does the damage here, Jan? What do you think? Must be the head pin. No, nope, let's take that back. Must be the two pin. <laughs> two Good pin. thing there's a replay. <laughs> <laughs> there, we'll show you to you again. Yeah. Two pin goes in between. There you go. Comes off. Whirly birds in and takes them both out. I should have known that because the three pin is really the only pin that can actually do that. Exactly, the two pin going to the wall and whirly birds around in between there. Nancy going high, leaving the nine pin on a delivery that you didn't get to see as we were replaying that uh, whirly bird. Nancy again, one of the best spare shooters in town. Cross lane. Almost doing exactly what she did before to miss the 610. She's going to have to make an adjustment in her cross lane spares. Well, Nancy moving into the fifth frame and obviously trailing by a few here. Pam Shin Shan with the double up. 24 pins, George. Not uh, not an insurmountable edge at this point. A lot of paper left, but Nancy's got a bit. There you go. That's what she needs to be doing here. You got to get on that strike train one time, Nancy Fair. We'll show you how to trip four out in her fashion. Good strong release, semi spinner. One two or one three pocket, a little high, but tripping out the four last. Nancy's sister, of course, Linda Lally, also a very fine bowler. Here's Pam going high in the fifth frame. As we mentioned on our last show, Pam, a former bowler for Moorhead State University, ranked fifth in the nation at one time. And as we mentioned on that show, collegiate bowling has definitely moved up a notch or two in the past few years. As almost every sport, George, uh, the younger the people start to play, the more talent they pick up and the more discipline they employ in their day-to-day -day bowling. And, and Pam is obviously a great product of that program. Yes, and we're going to see uh, some of the current products of the junior program next week. Pam? is 32 pins in the lead as we speak but Nancy has that strength working and she could cut that lead down by another 10. We've got a lot of paper left so don't go away. Good shot. Very good shot here in the sixth. Excellent shot. Pam just throws an absolute rope. Good roll. Take a look at it. Consistently over that 10th board. 1-3 pocket filled up. Ten in the pit, every pin doing its job. Pam, you are looking good. Nancy can actually cut from 30 down to 20 here with the strike. Leaves the five pin. She lines up, George, but the deflection on this ball is a little surprising to me. Let's see if we can pick up why. The release looks good. Her target line looks good. Now watch the ball. It's got to jump to the right. There you go. There you go, and it keeps mm. deflecting, just Barely. missing that five by less than a sixteenth of an inch. 
oh. easy spare to bring back. Well, maybe a 30 second. Okay. okay. Uh, I was going to say, let's, <laughs> let's get that accurate now. Let's make sure we're correct. Get the calipers out. Huh? <laughs> so it'll remain at a 32 pin lead for Pam through a little bit more than half a game. There you see the scoreboard. 108 to 76 in the, the fifth frame. Pam with the strike up in the sixth. Nancy working on that spare right here. And again, the five pin. No stranger to match play competition. Nancy Fair and Steve Fair, her husband, an accomplished doubles partner of mine from the 70s or the 80s era. And... Uh, uh, they won, uh, what was it, Jen? It was the Gold Rush LPBT, which is a ladies' tour mixed doubles tournament. It's a fabulous And they job. got a lot of cash A for lot it. of cash, that's right. She's won a number of events over the years. Yeah, last week I talked about Regina Snodgrass and also Linda Ashley. I said how she was uh, the city champion for all events. This lady here won the WIBC National All Events. Oh, my. Strong. Got that right. Also the 89 Bowlers Journal Tournament, Ohio State Match Game Champion, Ohio State Singles, Doubles, All Events, and Team Champion. Then she puts a note to turn it over because there's lots more on the back. <laughs> <laughs> turn it over, please. please. There's Steve. There's Stacy. The, the, the absolutely one of the best bowlers ever to come out of the city of Cincinnati, Steve Fair. Hooks up with Nancy Fair, formerly Nancy Lally, and forms a dynasty of bowling. Of course, Pam Shinshang stands in the way of Nancy now, and Pam working on a double up here in the eighth frame. She continues to hammer away at those pins. Showing me a lot, showing me an absolute incredible amount of talent. Watch her show you a great shot. End over end roll, fills the pocket up, no doubt about this. The last two would be the 7-9, but they're out of here. Nancy Fair must start striking now, and she can't quit till the match is over. There you go, Nancy. That was right on the money, and she did need that. She's trailing by 43 pins. Still a 205 she can post if she strikes out in the ninth and 10th. Of course, Pam, if she strikes out on the other hand, can still get 250. Nancy with an, uh, just an untraditional opening for her, opening in the first and again in the third frame. Not what you're used to seeing, but... Uh, Oh, no. Anything but that. That just about spells disaster for Nancy Fair in this particular match. Lane 13, not treating her very kindly at this point, leaving the 6-7. She's got to go for it. She can't play safe. There you see it. She's got to slide the 6-pin right-hand side of your screen over. She's going for it. Not to be today. Oh, I think that's just going to about do it. I believe you're well, right. Well, it will do it. <laughs> Damn, Not Shinshang. just about any. Let's see, 171 Nancy can finish with. 160 uh, something without even throwing another ball. Pam will be moving on to match number two, and that's three. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Well, we've, we've watched Pam throw some great shots. We're going to show you a top shot. Watch her go over the top of the ball, pull it. She's been hitting the 10th board. She hits the 11th board going to the left, going to cut right straight through and leave the infamous 4 7 10. You know, in between last week and this week, the only time Pam has thrown a bad shot is when she's been so far in the lead that it hasn't really mattered. Exactly. That's a good point, Jen. In fact, when she had to pull it out last week and turn on the steam to win our third match, right. she did that. With three strikes in the ninth and tenth. Even without a mark, she's going to post another 200 game. Two games from last week, 243, 211. Even with an open, 
2-0 this game, and should she strike out, she'd be in the 2-20 era. And that, that's some mighty fine bowling. Pam will go on to meet Robin Boskin, who if I had to pick one bowler that's really stood out this year for the women, it would be Robin. She has just, in just one year's time, her game, I'll bet her average has gone up at least 20 pins. I will try to get a word with her before the next match to see what she may have attributed that uh, rise in success from, Jen. Good support. Well, Pam's turning in to be a giant killer. She sure is. Some kind of buzzsaw. This is going to be her third straight win. Very cool and collected. I mean, it's, uh, she said she was nervous at the close of last show, or last week, but I don't see nerves. I think she's pretty calm. If those are nerves, they're the they're kind of nerves to have. Right? Right. Hold that one. But again, you're right, Jen. It's when it really doesn't seem to matter when she throws the, the letdown shots. A smile from both competitors. Nancy Fair knows that she was out bold today. Pam's going to take a little drink there and get ready for match number two. Nancy wants to finish out respectably. And that's about as respectably as you can get. With three here, she could finish out with 171, well below her norm, but this is what she's more used to throwing, a 1-3 pocket, a little tight, but that's her hit. That's the one she carries the best. And I'll bet you a partridge hot dog that this is a strike to George, huh? No, this is a win. This is a win-win. You can't lose that's on right. this bet. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Okay, George is buying. <laughs> Meet me at the hot dog stand. One hot dog stand coming up. We'd like, seriously, we would like to thank our sponsors, Partridge Meats, is uh, again serving Cincinnati for uh, well over a hundred years, and uh, we're proud that they are one of our sponsors, and that uh, hopefully you'll be tuning in and supporting them as Nancy Fair finishes strong with a 171 to a 212 and we are going to be coming back for game number two don't go away